Hello, hello, more Dimmers here and welcome back to Magnus Carlsen Chess Tour Finals, day two of the Super Final. So again, Magnus Carlsen, who's gonna play as white in this game, this is the game number one, I'm gonna play against Hikaru Nakamura, who's gonna play as black. And just the reminder that in the first day, the first match, Magnus Carlsen lost to Hikaru Nakamura, so Hikaru got his first point and who's gonna win three matches and um, then of course gonna win this tournament. So it's very very serious for Magnus Carlsen he opened with d4 knight f6 c4 e6 knight f3 d5 knight c3 and now d takes on c4 by Hikaru Nakamura again he played that in the in the first day and definitely Magnus Carlsen wanted to prepare something else uh, because he said in the interview that he watched this line because um, definitely that was um, a little bit surprising so he watched at this, at this line and he prepared a bit, not much. He said that he watched one minute. I don't believe him, but okay, maybe maybe that's true. We have e4 uh, and now b5. b5 defending the c4 pawn. Of course, the pawn is undefended, but the knight also protects e4. So black would take on e4. Um, this is why e5 is the main line here. Knight d5, knight b5 and knight b6. So what just happened here? Uh, this pawn is controlling d3, that's the one thing, bishop b7, it's very easy to activate the bishop also, d5 is empty, so the knight can jump there very very easily, and finally the b file is semi-open, so black can, you know, activate the rook pretty easily if needed. So, uh, you know, the pawn structure is completely shattered, but there are some advantages also uh, for black in that position. And now a3 was played by Magnus Carlsen and he got a pretty good position, you know, in the in the yesterday's game. However, here we have a4. a4 with the very simple idea of pushing to a5 and kicking the, the knight. Uh, and here a6 is the main idea, kicking that knight from, from th this position. However, Hikaru plays queen d7 and he bleeds that, so definitely it's his uh, preparation for this line as well. Uh, so now a5 is not possible possible because the, the, the knight is hanging, so uh, Magnus play bishop e2, also blitzing all the moves, and now we have knight c6, very interesting, because now the knight is not covered, so maybe a5 is possible, but actually is not, that would be a blunder, because after knight a5, rook a5, there is bishop b4 winning the material with the check, uh, bishop d2 is, is, is possible, but simply take this, um, the knight is under attack, the, the bishop is under attack, so white would like to probably win a bit of, of material, the pawn. But after queen c7, bishop a5, uh, white of course are down the exchange and have worse position. So uh, definitely it's not possible to push the pawn right now. Uh, this is why we have castle and now it's possible to push the pawn. This is why we have knight a5 by Hikaru Nakamura. Uh, concentrating on defending this pawn. This is very, very annoying pawn. Um, and now Magnus has to find the plan how to play. However, he, he also uh, was prepared. Anyway, this is the well-known maneuver knight g5 with the idea of bishop a h5 concentrating on f7 and uh, if black tries to play something like g6 then of course bishop can retreat on this diagonal and the knight can jump to, to e4 and then to f6 because that f6 is gonna be very weakened and uh, white gonna have beautiful game. So very nice idea, however Hikaru uh, immediately play h6, so kicking the knight, so knight e4 by Magnus Carlsen and bishop b7, moving the bishop on the longest diagonal, also attacking the, the knight for now. So knight c5, attacking the queen and attacking this powerful bishop, uh, and Hikaru Nakamura decides to um, give up the, the pair of bishops, bishop c5. We have d takes on c5, knight takes on d5, and just for your information, all these moves were blitz. So both players definitely uh, were quite well prepared for this line. We have rook a3. So this is this, uh, you know, hidden idea behind a4 move. 
So in the first match we had the h4 and Magnus brought the king's rook to the attack on g7 but now we have rook a3 lifting the rook and now the rook can come to g3 and also attack the point on g7. Magnus likes to focus on g7 in this opening and it, it was uh, pretty successful in the, in the game even he lost but he had a very interesting and very active position. We have a6 kicking the knight, knight d4 and now knight e7 making a space for the queen and this actually Magnus Carlsen missed in his calculations. He played queen d2 uh, attacking the, the knight, uh, however after queen d5 the knight is protected by the very nice threat. This is a checkmate threat, very very serious one. And here, believe me or not, but Magnus Carlsen spent almost 12 minutes. This is rapid time control, 15 minutes per player plus incrementation. So 12 minutes is, you know, uh, most of the time. And uh, he could go for something like bishop f3, but it doesn't really, it looks good. But but after, um, you know, uh, queen c5, what next? Exchanging this, this powerful bishop, but what next? Uh, the castle is coming, the rook gonna attack the, the knight, so knight f3 going back and black gonna have beautiful position. This rook looks funny on a3 now and uh, that's definitely not the way. This is why after, you know, spending almost 12 minutes, Magnus goes with this plan. Uh, rook to g3 first and after queen c5, uh, now of course not rook g7 because rook g7 is losing because after castle um, then this knight is, is under attack twice and it cannot really be defended only by the rook but then h5 and then knight g6 and this rook has nowhere to go, cannot protect the knight, uh, all of the squares of course are, are, are covered somehow and the rook cannot defend the, the knight anymore. Uh, so that would be losing, this is why Magnus Carlsen found b4. Uh, very strong move, forking the queen and the knight, so the only solution for black is of course taking en passant. Uh, and now bishop a3. Uh, saying, okay, uh, we're gonna exchange the bishop for the knight. You protect the knight, so we have a queen a3, queen a5, and okay, let's see what just happened. So, uh, white has the attack on the on the b3 pawn uh, on the c7 pawn and also on g7 and black cannot you know protect everything here uh, also knight e6 you know sucking on the on the e6 is possible and if black t takes then of course this bishop goes to h5 uh, and operate on this powerful diagonal and black really can be in the trouble so what to play what's the best move in the position for black uh, bishop d5, so uh, Hikaru Nakamura doesn't care about c7 and about g7, however he protects e6 and he also protects the pawn on b3. But there is very interesting idea on b3 because first the knight of course can take and, and after bishop takes uh, this bishop gonna be pinned, the rook can come to b1, then the bishop can support also this attack, the queen if needed as well. So, uh, but at the end of the, on, of the variation uh, black gonna have two extra pawns so it doesn't work. But very interesting is rook takes on b3 uh, and this bishop was defending b3 and also was defending the, the, the rook on a8. Uh, and what is the idea here? After bishop b3, there is move knight b5, attacking the queen. Uh, and of course the knight cannot be taken because two rooks would be lost. So queen a4. Uh, and after knight c7 with check king d7, there is queen b6, with the very very strong attack. Luckily for black, black has queen c6 uh, and after knight a8 getting back the material, the queen is protected, also um, the bishop is under attack so black would probably take on, on b6 and after knight b6, king c6, it looks like the knight is trapped but there is still a rook b1 move. Um, and after bishop c2, rook b2, the bishop is still under attack uh, so bishop can be moved to e4 and then then bishop a6 winning back the material 
So now the material is equal and if rook b8 then of course knight c4 and after exchanging black stands better because black has uh, the king in the center. However, white can also put the, the pawns on the dark squares and black has, you know, a light square bishop. So uh, white also would have a chance uh, for, for playing. Very interesting variation. All of this, you know, maneuver with the knight here, 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 uh, protecting the queen. Just, just insane. Uh, however, of course, Magnus goes uh, for, with the minutes on his clock, he goes for rook to g7. Very simple. And now c5 by Hikaru Nakamura. And here is the problem. What to do now? Uh, Magnus Carlsen got the initiative. However, now his knight is under attack. And if he just retreat, uh, then after king f8, he also has to retreat with the with the rook, so the attack just ends, okay? Rook g4, now b2, and this pawn gonna win the game. The queen gonna support, uh, even the rook can support the pawn and win the game. So, uh, it's not possible. Magnus Carlsen found something else. Bishop h5 saying, okay, uh, if you take my knight, then you're gonna have a troubles on f7. Uh, would you dare? And Hikaru said, okay, I don't believe you. Uh, C takes on D4, show me what you have. We have Rook takes on D7 and now some nasty discoveries, you know, can happen. But what exactly? There are no good discoveries here. Uh, so probably the biggest threat would be Queen C7. Queen C7 and now this discovery is very, very serious. Okay, that is a checkmate discovery. So King D7 and there are no good discoveries, no discoveries at all for white. Uh, but now Magnus have bishop g4 and it looks like, okay, this move does nothing because, of course, the pawn is defended. However, can you find undefended pieces in the, in the black's camp? Because, you know, the queen is undefended, but also the bishop is undefended. So it's very, very serious threat taking the bishop and the bishop is undefended because of these two pins. These pieces... Uh, don't defend the bishop, so that's pretty serious. And now black can have, uh, you know, two moves uh, to, to avoid that. First is king e8, and now uh, we would have, you know, threefold repetition. Or more brave, king c6. This is what Hikaru Nakamura played. So what to play next? Of course, the, the rook to c1 cannot enter the game because the queen still controls c1. So bishop e6 by Magnus Carlsen, sacrificing yet another piece for the initiative. We have bishop e6, a rook f6, pinning the bishop, king d7, defending, and now queen b6, attacking the bishop twice. So bishop d5, avoiding the, the capture, and now rook d6, attacking the king. And now how to escape with the king? King. Uh, would you go um, to c8 or maybe to e8? Which move is better in your opinion? If king c8, which um, Hikaru Nakamura should play actually, black doesn't have, you know, continuation because how to attack the king? Yes, you can win these two pieces for the rook. However, uh, black gonna have the, the extra rook, the king in the corner. So it's not actually easy to, to do anything here. So rook d5 is probably the, the only option to continue. However, after taking the, the knight, uh, it's very easy to defend by black. Uh, rook a7, then bring the rooks, uh, okay, and continue the game. So uh, it's 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 very good move, okay. King c8, but it's quite anti-intuitive. You would like to, you know, go far from the queen. So king e8 was played by Hikaru Nakamura, uh, and now we have rook d5. Uh, knight d5 and now queen c6 with check, king e7 and now queen b7, king e6, queen c6, king e7, queen b7, king e6, queen c6 and in this position Hikaru Nakamura didn't want a draw and with one minute on the clock he played king f8. So he goes, you know, he want to play for the win and ask Magnus how you want to continue. Okay, I know my king is in the front of the pawns. I know uh, your queen is cutting me over there. However, how you gonna, you know, enter with the, with the rook to the game? Uh, Magnus plays queen d5 saying, okay, now queen f7 is a very serious threat, probably with some mating ideas. So we have queen e7 uh, protecting f7, so it's not possible. And here Magnus Carlsen actually 
uh, could draw that position. Draw is everything he can uh, he can get because he cannot checkmate with the queen only. Of course, uh, the rooks are connected. The, the the queen is still on the board and it's not possible. So he should actually bring the rook to the game. Bring the rook to the game. And after b2, it looks like pretty dangerous. However, queen f3, king g6, uh, rook c6, and rook can enter the game. This was his only chance. And after, let's say, king g7, queen g4 with check. And now uh, the king can run somewhere there, but this is still a draw. Uh, or play something like queen g5, more active. Uh, but this variation is also drawish because rook c7 and after king g6, this also is... Uh, is a draw. Uh, if if black tries something more, uh, like okay, king f8, then of course we're gonna have a checkmate here. Uh, so that would not work. So that would be a draw if Magnus find rook c1, okay, and bring the rook to the game. That that's the that's the that's the only chance for the draw. He of course cannot win anymore. Uh, he lost all his material. However, he played e6, and e6 is uh, is losing move because now the king has the uh, possibility to you know uh, go and hide behind the, the pieces. We have king g3. Uh, queen e4, king g7, Magnus tries to, you know, get some material back with tempo, uh, but after king g7, queen g4, uh, queen g7, there are no more checks, so queen c4 attacking the pawn, but now b2. And the pawn is defended by the by the queen. Of course, rook b8 is coming, and uh, that's that's unplayable. Magnus tries f4, maybe to push the the pawns, maybe to bring the rook now, but it's already too late because rook b8, and now he has to think about b1. So uh, we have queen e4, and after rook h7, bringing the rook to the game. Rook b1 blocking the pawn, a uh, queen b7 asking to exchange the queens. Uh, Magnus, of course, is not interested. Queen e2, but after rook c7, he resigned and he resigned because the rook c1 is coming and nothing can be done. Uh, okay, queen can be brought to the first rank, however, queen b6 with check. Uh, and then queen e3 controls c1 uh, and and that's all game over h4 uh, and rook c1 is coming anyway and uh, nothing can be done here this of course is winning for black this is why in this position uh magnus carlsen resigned so this is how uh, day two of the grand final started hikaru nakamura won the first game i'm gonna show you uh also magnus carlsen actually managed to equalize the score and we had the blitzes and i will show you decisive blitz so stay tuned and if you like this video press like if you don't like it for some reason press unlike and if you don't want to miss another part press subscribe smash the bell button thanks for watching and see you in the next one